Hey, hey, crafters. Good to see y'all. Tom Creek here with Creek Bank Creations. How's everybody doing out there tonight? We're glad to have you. It seems like it's been two weeks since we last... Hold it, it has been two weeks since we last saw you. Anyway, we're back. It's Tom Creek and Julie Creek with Creek Bank Creations. We're a small paper craft company from the land of tall corn and not much more in Perrysville, Indiana. We're glad to be with you tonight. We are a small manufacturer. We have our own line of dyes, rubber stamps, paper, adhesives, tools, and all kinds of paper crafting the accessories. The Yellow Rose of Texas is here. Is the Yellow Rose? The Yellow Rose is there. So is Debbie Miser. Hey, Debbie, how are you all doing? Hey, Cindy. Good to, good to hear from you all. Hey, Kathy, how are you? And there's Christine Anderson. How are you, Christine? We're glad to have you log on and say hello and how to do. Yeah, are we going to have fun tonight? I'm telling you what, we're continuing the All is Calm series. Wait till you see this card. This is smoking. Check this out. Look at that. Look at that. I was told to grab it right here. There it is. Look at that. Hold on, I did it wrong. I was trying to get it. Just like that. The crafting Can cowboy who doesn't the know craft, how to craft. Remember, I'm a crafting cowboy. I don't craft, but my wife does. Isn't that cool? Slim line. It's slim. It's trim. You may not be, but the card will be. How about that? Hey, this is going to be a fun card tonight. And don't forget, we have the All Is Calm Mega Bundle Special. That's the $258 value uh, for $180. Uh, but remember, if you already have some of the stuff or if you want additional items, Remember to use the, the, the coupon code MARY, that's right, MARY, as in Merry Christmas, just use the MARY part, uh, for an additional 15% off your products, and free freight for all orders over $50. And don't forget, if you like what we're doing here, and you want the instructional PDF, okay, you can get that from us online for $4.99 and download it, uh, so... Um, um, don't forget that. The All is Calm PDF is what that's called. Is that what we have that on the website is, is uh, listed as PDFs? You know, one never knows. One never knows. If you can't find it's it, call PDFs. me. It's, it's under, under PDFs. PDFs, Mrs. Creek says. Well, hey, I hope you all have... Huh? It's under downloads. Excuse me. Forget that. I didn't say that. It's under PDF. No, it's under downloads. <laughs> it's under downloads. Downloads, right. Anyway, hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Hope... Not too many of you were trapped inside with a Debbie COVID. Debbie says she wants you to make the card tonight. Debbie, I would love to make the card Debbie, tonight. Debbie, you offered. I did offer. I did offer. You know, for, for being the crafting cowboy and not being the guy that craft, sometimes I can pull one out of the fire, if you know what I mean, Debbie. But tonight's not tonight, but it will be soon. Um, anyway, I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, um, uh, sorry if some of those of you got trapped due to COVID. Uh, but maybe we can cheer you up tonight and pick things up a little bit. Uh, we're glad to be back with you. Um, we had a uh, great time with our family for the past two weeks, so we're glad to be back. Lots of, uh, lots of chitlins running all around the place, so mm -hmm. I'm a little tired, but I am still back here in the saddle. So with that, Mrs. Creek, did you have anything else to add? I, I think we've covered it. Okay. Uh, so without any further ado, here's Mrs. Creek to give you the second in the series of the All Is Calm series. Think, See ya. Oh, by the way, I'm going to give away two of those Sissix embossing folders tonight, the Christmas ones, the 3D, the Fa La La, $9.99 value. I'm going to give away two of those, so be on the lookout for the trivia questions. I'll give you a little hint. They, they are going Take to your time. They are going to be related to Christmas, famous Christmas movie trivia. So, here she is. Like the Wizard of Oz. Take it away, Mrs. Creek. Yes, like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yes. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, greetings, crafters. I am um, happy to be back in the um, studio tonight. And um, I just want to take a minute to shout out to Carla Kennedy. Carla. Kennedy? Yes. Kennedy? Carla. Kennedy? Am I saying it right? Kennedy. Who sent from Morris, from beautiful Morris, from Illinois. Morris, Illinois, who sent us this beautiful Christmas card, which is amazing. And then what's kind of cool is she made the little piece here, so you can flip it over. Show you this little tricky thing she did, and it's a calendar. So that was pretty awesome. And special thanks to uh, 
Janice Dodd, who also sent me a little something in the mail. So um, we are so appreciative of our online community and um, the connection is amazing and we are very, very Mary thankful. Beth. Mary Beth also likes your necklace. She noticed your new necklace. Yes, I, I managed to, to squeak money out of Tom. <laughs> well, golly, you used necklace. a crowbar to get, to get in my wallet. <laughs> so um, I have a um, friend adorable affordable accessories you can find her on facebook jean stalker jean stalker and um, she um this is paparazzi and it it's five dollars five dollars so that's pretty awesome Fidella, Fidella, so Fidella. it's hard to find like the right kind of jewelry for this shirt so i i just keep looking and i thought this was appropriate so had thanksgiving by myself but dear brother delivered oh uh so for those of you who um we're stuck in the house alone. Um, I, I'm so sorry about that. That's just an absolutely horrible thing. But I do have good news for you. This virus is not going to last forever. So um, we don't know how long, but at some point this virus is going to be gone. And you will be um, able to go and do what you want to do and be with your family or your loved ones or your friends. And um, I heard someone say last week, this too shall pass. And I was like, oh, that's so, like, you know it, but it's just so good to hear somebody say, this isn't going to last forever. So um, I just wanted to share with you Philippians 4, 6. My brother um, shared this particular scripture with me today, and I never realized there's a promise in this scripture. So Philippians 4, 6 be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guide your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. So the scripture says, be anxious for nothing, but pray with thanksgiving. For everything. Yes, but I'm paraphrasing now. I know, but pray for everything. <laughs> yes, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and thanksgiving. So what the scripture is saying is, don't be anxious, pray about everything, be thankful, and let your requests be known to God. And when you do, he will give you peace, which passes all understanding. So in the certain uncertain day that we are living in, with craziness running wild it's so nice to have peace which passes all understanding and it's the promise there in philippians 4 6 if we're anxious for nothing but praying about everything and choosing to find things to be thankful for god says he'll give us peace which passes all understanding so um that takes discipline on our part to um do the work to um turn off the anxious thoughts and um spend time with prayer and God. Um, but the promise is there that when we do that, he will give us the peace, which passes all understanding. So when um, I encourage you, if that scripture was really meaningful, you to type it out or write it out and stick it on your computer or put it on your makeup mirror and um, get what, it uh, Amy asked, in your system. That, what was that, that was Philippians four, six. So, um, Get it in your spirit, get it down in your soul, and um, that's when it becomes life-changing, and that's that takes effort on our part to do that. Next to the book of Palms. <laughs> Palms, Palms is not in my Bible. So um, we we kind of took a little break. We did a um, a live event with Mega Meat, and in case you missed that, we released the brand new product called the Shutter Pull Die and the shutter sleeves. And um, I have released that video on our YouTube channel as a separate video, as a standalone video that explains how to use the um, shutter pull. So just in case you haven't seen it, this is what it looks like if you're a scrapbooker um, or you can um, put it in mini albums. Tom, can you grab that mini album? I can, I can. So shutter pull is offered as a bundle on the website and you can you can, you can go. Tell them about the what? No, we haven't even talked about it. Um, 
you can go look at the website and what's great about the shutter sleeves. These are the shutter sleeves that, um, I don't, I don't want all that. <laughs> Tom's handing me more stuff, but wait, there's more. The shutter sleeves are designed so that you can put a four by six photo with a photo mat in them and they are totally protected. So what I do is adhere to back to back so that the seam doesn't show seam is on the back. So if you're doing mini albums, like this is the belly band little, um, this is an eight by eight mini album and this is the Prima album. It's on our website. Um, if you do the belly band and you want to tuck your photos in there, now your photos are protected, which is really awesome. So um, at the end, do you want to do it now? I'm yeah, going, like let me finish talking and then I'll let you interrupt me. Okay. <laughs> kind of. Okay, so here's the 8x8 eight eight album. I just want to show you how you can actually fit that also in an 8x8. Eight eight. Flip, flip, flip. And those are full-size photos. And then um, you can use those sleeves to tuck pockets in a belly band. So if you're a scrapbooker hanging around here tonight, um, this works really great. Diane has, um, from Ohio, has um, invented a little way to use it in a card but i haven't i haven't gotten that far yet so m many many things we can do with it do you want me to just say the special mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. um so the bundle special is on our website and the bundle special is the um shutter pull die and the shutter sleeve so a package the die and two packages of sleeves uh, regular price $38.96. It's 30% off when you buy it as the shutter special at $27.99. Now, whenever we have a shutter special, you cannot use the coupon code with it because you're getting a greater discount for that. But that's a fun new product. It has been very well received. People are having fun with it. Um, we just haven't had, we really just haven't had time to address it. Now, tonight we're going to work on the Slim Card. And we are specifically working with the die tonight that's called the Slim Front Card Panel. Okay, when you buy the Slim Front Card Panel, you get this Slim Front die that has this big giant tab on the side of it, and there's two banners that go in there. We're going to work with this die tonight. We're going to team it up with the Slim Stitched Rectangles, and then we are using the... Um, Edges 001, Grass and Hills. We're using the Evergreen Trees, and we are using Into the Woods die, which I do not, here it is, Into the Woods. So really simple tonight, really. Uh, we're using Into the Woods, Evergreen die, Edges 001, Stitch Rectangle, Slim Front Panel. That's what we're using tonight. So if you don't want that whole ginormous bundle that Tom talked about, you can um, just buy the ones you want for 15%. You some of these. Yeah, so you can, or you can pick and choose, do what you want. All right, so here's what we're doing. We are working on the Slim Front card, and we are going to learn how to use that Slim Front panel. If you buy that whole ginormous bundle, then you get the PDF file for free. If you just want to buy the PDF file because like you already own part of the stuff or you just don't want to spend $200 on product, um, then you can pick and choose what you want and get the PDF file. Here's what's great about the PDF file. The PDF file has this cheat sheet in the back and this is the setup sheet for the Slim Card die. So I designed this, Thomas, can you, um, I meant to do this earlier, can you go to the back and see if you can find the slim cards that are like, if you look at the slim card pod, they're up on that little shelf up there. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually designed to be um, a frame. And so the setup sheet will explain to you that the outer line here, this line that I have my finger on, is for the die that comes with the set. So when you open up, the slim card package. There are two main dies in there. There's this piece, the 
It does not come with this piece of plastic. I attached it. I'm going to show you how to do that tonight. So let's take it off. So this die and this die. That's what comes with the set. So the outside line on the setup sheet is for the die that comes with the package. But we're not using that because I wanted a deeper um, inset on the project. So if you made this card with the die that comes with, you would have an outer frame that looks like this. So this die is designed so that you can attach it to a paper and make a, um, a gatefold card out of it. And I'll show you the back. We have this little tab back here. That's how it's attached. So that is how I designed it to be used. But we can do all kinds of things with that card front because we can pop different kinds of dies into the panel and make different designs out of it, which is fun. So this shows you the um, with the banner across the front. And we this is a card we did this summer. So tonight, what we're going to do is learn how to cut a rectangle shape into the front of the card so we can actually pull the panel through, which is totally fun. So are there any questions, Tom? Can you, um, I don't have my, cam my computer over here. I can't see the feed. Any, does anyone have any questions? Bum, bum, bum. Did you notice that my cup matches my earrings? I did. I did. <laughs> <coughs> no questions so far. Okay, I need my laptop over here. We are. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we are ready to learn. Pardon me, ladies. It was buffering. Hmm. Are you buffering over there, Tom? I'm behind. We still got the. We're still showing the card. Okay, so Thank that's you, not good. What system are you on? Thank you, Diane. Right. Okay. Okay, I'm going to turn the card. I'm going to turn the camera down. So hang on. Oh, one other thing. In this series, I've when we've been doing these series, I've been doing a bonus card. And the bonus card in this particular collection is this card. So we will not be featuring this on a live, but the instructions are in the kit. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, Thank you, Kathy. This was just you, my daughter-in-law's favorite card you, <laughs> out of the <laughs> set. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera down. Thank you, Mary Beth. What, why are they? They're blessing me because I sneezed. Oh, all right. He needs blessed. We all need we'll blessed. All blessing. Okay, wow, I have a major delay here. Thank you, Lois. Thank you, Dodgy. Okay, Dodgy. guys, I've Dodgy. turned the camera down, but I have a major delay on You're my end. Good. You're looking good. You're looking good. I right. cannot, I have no idea what I'm looking I, at. I re, I'll refresh your screen, but you're right on. You're right okay, on the refresh money. it. You're right on the money, honey. I'll get it. You do go ahead and do your thing. What did I do? There. Okay. I got, I got it. Okay, so we are going to work on this outer panel first. And to do that, we are going to take that slim front panel die and we are going to work with the third smallest die from the stitch rectangle set. Now the first thing you want to do is the back of our card is white. So we are going to cut a piece of cardstock for the back white and it is four by nine and a quarter. So there's my four by nine and a quarter. That's my back. Okay, and I got all that black of the camera in there. Now I have my um, printout here that comes with the PDF file. And you can set this up the way I'm doing it, or you can do it the way Diane shows you. Diane Morris wrote the instructions for me. You can follow Diane's instructions, which is just taping it together with purple tape and centering it. I'm going to show you how I do it when I use this die. I'm going to take a piece of our acetate. This is the medium weight acetate and I'm going to set it on the edge of this line. 
So I have it here, okay. And we are going to attach the dye to that piece of acetate. So I'm gonna put a piece of tape here, put some tape on it. And it really does not take very much tape. What, Tom, what are you eating? I think Tom got into Cindy's chocolate. Was that Cindy that gave you chocolate? Is it? It was. Cindy, is she here tonight? I don't know if Cindy's watching or not, but I am still eating her chocolate. It's really good. That's mm, frozen. If you can hear crunching, it's Tom crunching chocolate. <laughs> okay, tape. Now, I'm just going to set that on top of the die, and then I can center that other die exactly that's not sticking because I didn't put a piece of tape on it put a piece little bitty piece of tape back there I can center that other die right in there and if you have the PDF file it's telling you exactly where it goes okay so it's going right in the middle so I'm just going to take a piece of tape <clears throat> maybe baby and put that on the top so did anyone have time to make um, cards over the holiday? Did you get any time to craft at all? Judy is asking, is our super tape comparable to red liner tape? Because red liner tape drives me crazy. Ours tears much easier than... Why, why, the question is, why does red line drive her crazy? Why does it drive you crazy, Judy? So I'm going to set that right on the interior line, and that is going to have, then I have evenly spaced all the way around. So that's the benefit of having that PDF file, is that you have that little cheat sheet to set up. And then you can keep it with your die. Now, I keep my die attached to this piece of acetate all the time. And then I can put a circle in there. I can change it out. I can do what I want with it. So that's my setup. Once I have my setup complete, I'm going to take my cardstock and I'm going to die cut it. What is she saying about red liner? Well, Diane says the super tacky tape liner doesn't stick to you like the red liner tape. Does. Right. But I'm not sure what um, Judy's issue is with the red liner tape, so I can answer her question. Okay, so most people... Oh, Judy says it's almost too stick sticky, sometimes hard to separate. No, Judy, uh, our super tacky tape is not overly sticky. It's sticky, it's very sticky, but it's easy to work with. You can tear it, uh, and I think you'll love it. So the red liner um, just has a stronger pull on it, and it's harder to get that red liner off sometime, and you will not have that problem. So I'm cutting. When you use the slim front card panel die and the rectangles as well, you're gonna need um, the extended cutting platform to cut those on, and if you need extended cutting plates, we have them. So there's my right, paint. And we have them, and you can get 15% off if you use the code Mary. There we go, and are you shipping that for free? If it's if the order is $50 or more. Okay. Okay, so once we have that die cut, that fold line is very close to the um, stitched line on this die, so I will, Give you a little secret when i do this i put this on my scoreboard and i go over that score line because it's sitting right next to that um stitch line so i just go over it just to help so that i get a good clean fold out of it it just helps so we're just going to run over that and then we're going to make sure we get a good clean fold out of it Fold it. It's just having that little um, stitch line right next to it is a booger. And then what we are going to do is attach that. Now, I should tell you, I am, I should have pressed harder. I am working with 110 pound cardstock. And um, I did design this card on 110 pound cardstock because I. Um, this card is tall, and when you use thinner paper, 
it tends to flop a little bit. So can you see what I'm doing? I'm just going to go back and go over that score again. Um, I've got heavy cardstock here, and I want to get a better score out of it. So um, heavy paper means I need to have a better score so I can get a good fold out of it. Sorry, guys. So I do recommend that this base be cut out of heavier cardstock. There we go. Get it going good. There we go. We're going to fold that. And this heavy cardstock is not cooperating with me tonight. I'm trying. I'm going to try and see it's a good thing Tom's not doing this project. Why is that? Because it's, it's arguing with me. But you always improvise. <laughs> you always improvise. <clears throat> Don't forget to give us a thumbs up out there, crafters. So I'm going to just run over it with my score tool so I get a good, clean fold Where did right you there. Paper? Um, this is um, the My Colors cardstock, and My Colors sells it in um, 110 pounds. So if you look online for My Colors cardstock, it's 12 by 12, and they sell it in a bunch of different colors. So I'm going to, um, we don't stock. Are friends from Arkansas? No, they're from, they're, they used to be my mind's eye. They're from Utah. Okay, so we have this, we have our panel that we made, and we're going to attach our card front. And I want to show you how I do this. Um, you could put liquid glue on it, but what I like to do is take my um, tape, and I use the quarter-inch tape, Run it down through here. <laughs> and what I want to show you is I leave that tail long on both ends. See how I'm too long right there? And then go in and trim it with your scissors. And that'll give you a really good connection on both ends. And then we are going to adhere that white base to that blue front. And we'll have attached our window. I need undo. undo. Creek. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little bit of undo down this. Undo the undo that will you. give me a chance because to undo is adhere that exactly where I want it and move it around. So if you haven't used undo or haven't seen me use undo before, undo um, suspends adhesion on tape just to give us enough time to move everything around and get it to sit exactly where we want it. In less than a minute, undo will dry and we will have permanent adhesion on the back. It's not sticking quite yet, but it will. So that is our card base. And you can see how when you use that slim front panel, you have the opportunity to change that window out and do what you want with it. So that's our card base. We're going to set that aside, and then we're going to get our blue cardstock, and we're going to cut a piece eight and three quarters by six. So I've already cut mine, eight and three quarters by six, and we are going to add snow to the background. So we're going to take the snowfall stencil, we're going to set that right on top, and we're going to do some stencil work. Now, um, Tom, is it possible for you to go out to the website and see if we have the Hero Arts white on there? I think that's, mm -hmm. I think we sold out of the other, right? Uh, yes, the Brilliance? The yeah, okay, so I'm going to use the Hero Arts white pigment tonight. Bring oh, yeah. No, I have it here. Um, and it is on the website. We, we did have the white Brilliance, but we are out of it. And I use both of these interchangeably. So I'm putting the stencil on with the purple stencil tape just to make sure it's not moving and it's not going anywhere. And now I have my white Hero Hues white ink. And this ink is good for stamping on dark cardstock or today we're going to do stencil work. So I'm going to use my J brush on this. The J brush is designed actually to use with dye based ink. And um, we recommend one brush per color family. So one for red, one for blue, one for green. 
um, in the dye-based family, the white brush I keep, and I put a white band on it, and I don't mix it with a dye-based ink. So once you start using a brush with the pigments, which you can, you can't mix them with a dye-based ink. So I keep three brushes just for pigment ink, one white, one silver, one gold. We're gonna pick up our ink just by pushing side to side. And this is gonna be wet and heavy. If you're used to using dry dye-based ink, it's a totally different feel. And the brush is gonna drag a little bit just because the ink is heavy. So we're gonna cover our whole stencil with snow. Any questions? So no, that reminds me of a, of a, of a question, a trivia question that I have. Are you anyway. ready for your question? Yes. Okay. No. I'll do this. You do. You give away. You do your question. Right now? Yeah, why not? Okay, we're giving away a Sussex 3D fa la 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 embossing folder, $9.99 value. Okay, crafters, are you listening? In the movie that was released in 1954, classic movie. Way before I was born, but anyway. And this uh, is might be our favorite movie, right? It might be. It might, it might be. be. Yeah. Well, then there's the other one. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> I don't watch the other one. Name, yeah, you do. <laughs> name the two major male stars in the movie White Christmas. What were their names? The, what was the question? What were the, the two. two uh -huh, the, two the two. The lead roles. The males? Uh-huh. The men. The, the men. men. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, come on, you guys. I know you know what was in White Christmas. Nobody Do they not know? This. They're looking it up. <laughs> okay, we're going to take the stencil off. And when you use the pigments, and then you can see we have that beautiful snowy background. When you use the pigments, you want to get the Wonder Wipe. This is our cleaning cloth. And Nancy wipe Ellis got it. That's that right, off. Nancy Ellis. Danny Kay and Bing Crosby. Right away. I'm, so I'm sorry, Marty. There's not a Davy K. Davy K wasn't in that movie, <laughs> but Danny K was. So congratulations, Nancy Ellis. Nancy, you won a Sysix 3D embossing folder. This is a $9.99 value. Uh, email us your um, your daily address, and we'll get that out to you. Okay. So we have our background done, and we are going to add a little um, moon in that background. So I just took my paper punch and punched a one inch punch into a scrap piece of cardstock and you can decide where you want to put it. I just stuck it up here in the corner. Take your brush and pick up some ink and we're just going to put that right up in the corner. And you can decide how dark you want to make it, like really showing up or just faint, however. You want to do it. Now, because we are working on cardstock, it the pigment ink will set down into the cardstock and dry, and we don't have to worry about heat setting it. So I'm going to set this aside for now, and then we're going to pick up um, a white cardstock, three and three quarters by six. And I got to find it over here in my pile. I'm looking, hang on. I got all kinds of papers over here. So three and three quarters by six is what we're looking for. And it appears that I'm missing. Oh, I keep typing stuff. There it is. Three and three quarters by six. And then we need another piece that is four and a half by six. Okay, so this is three and three quarters by six, four and a half by six. And we're going to take that edges 001 grass and hills die. And we are going to lay it across the top edge. And we're going to die cut it. So... When you put it on, you can put it on any way you want, but when you put it on, you want it to hug the right side. So we want that die cut line to run all the way off the edge over here on the right. And don't worry about the fact that it did not get finished over here on the left. 
Loretta asked, what was the name of that paper company again? My Colors Cardstock. My Colors Cardstock. How come it's... There it is. And so I'm going to die cut both of these right across the top edge. This is actually a double stitched edge, which is handy for so many things. So you can see there, it's um, stitching on the top and the bottom. And we're going to do both of those. So we're gonna do the other one. And if you, I'm kind of doing mine, setting up so that the pattern is basically the same on both of them, but you could get more creative with it if you wanted to and move that around. So we're just making that snow mound. Okay, now I have sized this snow to fit our birch tree. So when we go back in later, we're going to have the birch tree and then we're going to have the snow mound. If your birch tree set is shorter, you'll have to make your snow taller. Speaking of snow, Ohio yes. and Pennsylvania both got snow. Anybody else get snow out there? We're going to take our scissors and just finish off that snow line on both of these. Okay, now, the instructions tell you <laughs> on the PDF file, after you make this <laughs> to score it, and when you do these two pieces, score them individually. In Tennessee, wow. At two and four inches. <laughs> I think Tom is having his own personal party. Okay, so I'm going to take my scoreboard, I'm going to set my paper, I'm going to put the short side up on the top of the scoreboard, and I'm going to score at two and four inches. And the instructions have you do this each individual, but I'm going to show you how I do it so that the folds line up more precise. Now you do have to remember, we are on that... Um, I think that's snow in Tennessee. A hundred. Well, God's blessed us by not sending it to us. Yeah, you guys keep that up. Do we need the water though? Do we need the rain? Okay. Oh, yeah, so we're going to score at two, and we're going to score at four. So I'm just going to come down, and I'm going to go over this, and you just kind of have to be make sure we get that straight. When you get farther down towards the bottom. You really don't have a, you kind of lose the score line a little bit. So if you use your ruler, it'll help keep you, keep you straight. Okay. So we're just going to go down right through there. And that helps that score line to be more accurate. I'm going to move my ruler over. Four. We're going to do the same thing. You could do them all individually if you wanted to, but I like doing them all together. So when we get this... There we go. Nice. Then all your score lines are in the same place and you can take that off and then go back over and get that better. Get that 110 pound cardstock really um, covered better since it's so thick. Got to be a little heavy handed with it. And we can go back over these pieces because we have already made that baseline just go back over them. Now the white paper that I'm using is um, regular 65 pound. I got, I um, used rather light things for that so that it would fold better. If you get too much heavy paper, you got a lot of bulk. There we go. So there's our folds. Got everything done. Got our card back there. So we are going to adhere <laughs> the short piece of snow to the tall piece of snow. So we're gonna flip this over and I'm gonna put tape down the side, down the two sides. And I'm gonna put tape across the bottom. 
And actually, I'm just going to do this to both of them. And I'm going to, this uh, little cheater tip that you're going to see right here is not in the instructions, but I'm going to show you. When I go to put that edge on, I'm going to, for the top, I'm going to put a little tape up here. But we're not going to pull that tape yet. So just put a few pieces across the top. And I am not putting tape on the score lines. Okay. You know what, Tom? I am missing my pick tool. I don't know. Well, I get you one. What happened? So I'm going to take the tape off the bottom and adhere that, the short piece to the tall piece. We want to line it up nice and straight, just like that. And then we are going to line that up with our tall piece. Our tape off. So the tape that's on that top edge, I still have the tape liner on it and I'm going to leave it on there. So I'm going to just kind of train this fold a little bit, get that going. There we go. And we're going to line that up right on that edge. And we just created that nice snow scene. And then we're going to fold that. So this is really heavy cardstock. It's a good idea to have your um, bone folder handy because you got to go through all of those layers. And we're going to fold that in, and then we're going to fold this panel back. This is going to be the one that peeks through the front. Now, when I fold this, I have I have a little bit of blue edge here showing. Just a little bit, but we don't have to worry because we're gonna, there's gonna be a panel. I'm thinking that's gonna be covered up. And yes, I'm right. So if you don't, if your piece is not exactly perfect, don't sweat it because it's gonna end up getting covered up. Actually, let's straighten that out a little bit. My fold is wumping on me. Okay. There we go. Okay. Awesome. There's our base. Now what we're going to do is take that birch tree die and we are going to slide the birch tree die in at the top. So I've already die cut this. I have this cut with our super tacky tape on the back. If you're not familiar with our super tacky tape, it comes in a three inch or a six inch roll. Or a quarter inch or... Yeah, uh, for die cutting purposes three or six inches, we're going to unroll it, we're going to put our white paper in it, and then we're going to die cut. So for a project like the birch tree, it's really um, crucial, nice to have this. And if you purchase it, you can get 15% off because you can see I can literally just peel that off. And then I'm going to slide that tree in to the right of the fold. And I want to tuck it in right underneath my snow edge there. So that's why I was saying earlier, if you have a different size birch tree, if you're not using our die, you'll have to kind of adjust how tall or short you make your snow. There we go. Love the birch tree. Now, we need a deer on there. So in the birch tree set, there are two deers, deers, deer, 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 oh deer, right there. And then we're going to put the evergreen, we're going to cut two small evergreens from the silver paper. And this is the um, basil paper foil, and I have my super tacky tape on the back. So literally, we're just going to peel those and stick those add them in. So I think this would make a good card for like a get well card for a guy this time of year. I have several customers who have husbands that are in the hospital right now fighting COVID. This would be a great card for a guy. 
Would you like to get this card, Tom? I'd love to get that card, Mrs. Creek. <laughs> I would love to get this. There we go. We've got our little scene all built, and we've got our little panel there. Now, what we're going to do is take our card, and we are going to adhere the panel into... We're going to put our 6 by 8 panel inside our card, and we need to adhere that about a quarter of an inch from the outside edge at the top and at the bottom and on the side. So what I have found is if I take my ruler and just give myself a little guideline, quarter inch, top and bottom, then it helps me when I go to lay that panel in to get it set in where I want it. And most of the time, when I set that panel in, it kind of covers up those little pencil marks. So I'm just marking quarter inch from the top, a quarter inch from the sides, all the way around. And then we are going to take our panel, and I'm going to flip the panel over right where the deer are. Here's my deer, I'm gonna turn that over, and we're putting adhesive on that back. So only on that one panel, we're gonna put adhesive. So you can see that if you have these instructions, you'll have the basic ability to make this kind of panel card. And my goodness, the ways you could change this up would be amazing. Many, many different ways you could amend this whole structure to make a birthday card or a different kind of card. Love the basic design. And you'll see in a minute how we're going to pull this all together. So we've pulled our tape off. And we're going to set that in to our card base using those quarter inch marks. Can you see that? Pull it over. Using those quarter inch marks as our guide. There we go. Now, this is a very heavy card, so use your score tool to flatten everything down. And there we have that part. Part one, done. Thomas, do you have another question? I do have another question. I'm going to start working on the front while Tom has his other question. Okay, we've got another uh, Sysix 3D Falala embossing folder here. You want to show this, Tom? Yes, it's cool. This is the Falala 3D embossing folder. Mm -hmm. And it is absolutely beautiful when you die cut it on the foil cardstock. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, crafters, another one of my favorite Christmas movies. It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart. You all remember that one? Okay. Two-part question. Who was Clarence, and what happened every time he heard a bell ring? Oh, my gosh. Repeat that question again. Who was Clarence, and what happened every time... He heard a bell ring. So I have cut the white cardstock with the third to the largest white. I'm sorry, third to the largest. Yes, that's correct, Sharon. Sharon rectangle die. He was an angel, and the an angel gets his wings. Sharon Malaldo, yellow rose, the text. The yellow rose. rose. And then the blue is cut from the second smallest. So the, the white is the third smallest. The blue is the second smallest. We're going to set it on there and center it. And that will be our front panel. Now we are going to take the second smallest die, second to the smallest stitch die, and we're going to cut it on white. And then we're going to take that edge die, and we're going to bring that edge out to the front. And I have found that what we're going to do is cut it with that edge die, because what we need is that front, that snow out the front, okay? If you cut it at about three inches, show you this, this is the nice thing about using the grid paper. I can kind of know that three inches is about right here. If I set that right there, that gives me good placement for it. We're going to set that right there. And we're going to die cut that. And 
if I'm tricky, I can take the other one, because there are more than one in here, and I can set it on the other side and die cut it, and that will give me the two pieces that I need. You could also cut it in two passes. I'm gonna cut it in one pass. Put that in our die cut machine and cut. Now these dies are like 5.75 inches long so that you get the length, but they will fit in the standard die cut machine, which accepts a um, six inch cut, a six inch cut. Okay, so there's my two. And we're gonna take our undo. Now undo is my adhesive remover. Undo is your front. And I'm gonna use that to pull off that tape so it doesn't tear up my cardstock front. And pull those pieces off. So I'm going to use that piece and that piece. Those are my two pieces, fun. And that'll give me the perfectly, that stitched edge will line right back up. We are going to adhere that right on top of our blue panel right there. So we're going to do the same thing that we did before. So how many people that are watching tonight actually fixed dinner or hosted a dinner at your house? Can you type hosted in the chat if you hosted Hosted, hosted, hostess with the mostest. Hostess with the mostest. So we hosted our family, but Tom put steaks on the grill. Diane hosted, Sharon hosted, Kathy did. So I kind of think when Tom cooks the, like Tom put the steaks on the grill, it kind of feels like cheating to me. Really? Yeah, because I didn't have to get up at like two o'clock in the morning to put that turkey in the I thought it's got to be oven. a great tradition. I, I I think it's a great tradition too. I'm just saying I, I like to not get up at two o'clock in the morning. Doris hosted but not for her family. Bless Judy your heart. That was kind. And took to her daughters. Who did? Judy oh, Judy had yum. Ribs. Yum, yum. Wow. You're giving me some new ideas. Yeah. Okay, so there's my snow. And then um, I can decorate my panel, so I'm going to add my deer. Amy, first time ever she cooked. Did you cook a turkey, Amy? Toasted and cooked. Sandy was cooked for all for the first time ever. Did you cook a, a turkey, Sandy? Did anybody eat turkey? That's funny. You know, the great thing about the turkey is that you have leftovers. Ribeye, Sharon, ribeye. But we didn't have any leftovers, so if we would have had well, turkey... Well, actually, we just finished the leftovers tonight. Maybe well, not m there wasn't much, baby. Not like if you have turkey. Okay, we're going to slide that... Um, Smoke the turkey. That sounds good. We're going to slide that birch tree die right back up in there. Deep fried turkey. I'd like to try that. Yeah, we've never done that. Who, who deep fried? Um, Amy. Uh, Amy, how Wanda, was it? Wanda. Wanda? Wanda deep fried. Oh, Amy had tur turkey. Yeah, smoked one. I don't... How long does it take to smoke? Did she say how long it takes? I didn't. So I'm just tucking my tree in there, and then we're going to add the evergreen, peel that back off. Deep fried turkey is marvelous, says Willis. Turkey dressing, mashed potatoes, deviled eggs, and noodles. Sounds good, Sandy. How many people eat noodles on Thanksgiving? That's funny. So I'm going to add the small deer on the front panel, and you can decide like where you want to put that little guy at. And I have a lot of paper fibers hanging around. Which drives me nuts. About three to four hours to smoke. Three to four hours. Oh, well, that's not too bad. Mm -mm. In a smoker or a grill? Are you smoking on the grill sometimes, Tom? It's a smoker grill. Smoker grill. Okay. All right. There's our panel. 
And we are going to, let's see, have you given away both? Of, we got both prizes given away, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to shut the card because we're about there. We're going to shut the card and we are going to adhere that front panel onto the inside of the card. Okay. So, you know what? We did not, I didn't show you. If we wanted. How many trees are with the birch tree die? There are two and I'll show you that die here in a minute. I, I did not adhere the top edge of this down when we did all this earlier. Um, if you want to ta tape down that top edge, I don't know if you remember, I slid those pieces of tape in there. I want to pull this back so you can see this. I slid those pieces of tape in there so you can go back in and pull that tape liner off. And there are a few pieces in there. If you feel like that needs to be attached, you can get back in there and pull that. This is in good shape. So I don't think I need to. I'm going to leave it. But what I want to show you is we have this and we're going to add this right into that panel. So we are going to put tape on it. So what you want to do is make sure that you're putting tape on the right side of it. So I kind I look at it, I draw myself a little pencil line right here. Okay, top and bottom. So I have it straight. Okay, so I've made the line. And then I'm gonna put a piece a line right a piece a pencil mark right there so that I get the tape on the correct side. If I tape it on the wrong side, I'm gonna have tape mess. We do not want tape mess. Have you ever had tape mess? Tape mess. <laughs> so we're gonna put our tape on there and pull that off. So we kind of started a new family tradition last year, or was it the year before? Maybe the year before, um, of using rolls frozen rolls and I cook them in a cast iron skillet in the oven and put rosemary butter on top of them. And that has turned out to be a huge hit with the family. We did that this year. We're gonna set that right in the middle and adhere that down. And that's gonna give us the panel for our card that opens and closes. So it's gonna sit in an envelope. And then to open this card, you really need to pull on that panel. Did anybody make giblet gravy? I miss giblet gravy. Just like that. Okay, I, I that is our card for tonight. I'm going to turn the camera up. Does anybody have questions? Hang on, I'm yeah, coming how up. Yeah, you make rosemary butter? <laughs> <laughs> did somebody ask that question? Yeah, sure I did. Okay, so one of my favorite things of all time is um, Re. I think her name's Drummond, her last name. She's the pioneer woman. And um, she has amazing, like, from scratch recipes. I haven't ever made anything that she makes that's not delicious. So you can look up that recipe. It's just those frozen, you buy the frozen roll, you put or it you in. Or yeast rolls, which would be or, preferred. Oh, method. Thomas. I'm a purist. Yeah, Tom's a purist. But let me tell you, he didn't have any trouble eating the frozen <laughs> rolls. So frozen rolls. Now, they're not cooked. They're raw. So you get them, you put them in the... Skillet. Iron skillet. I think I called it electric TV skillet. skillet and you iron skillet. You put it in the iron skillet. You let it raise three to five hours. Then you take your butter, stick of butter, and you get fresh rosemary and crush it up really small and put it in the butter. And then before you put the rolls in the oven, you brush it with butter. And then, um, I'm sorry, you put the Himalayan salt on top, little Himalayan salt and the rosemary butter, which is butter and fresh rosemary, and you bake it for 20 minutes. And when you pull it out of the oven, your family is like, <laughs> score! So that was a huge hit, and we all decided that we really like that better than buying rolls, which is what we've done So we in are, the past. So we are making cards, and we're giving cooking Yes, we're doing to... rosemary butter. <laughs> As well and as we're here to enhance some... your spiritual growth. <laughs> <laughs> it's your one-stop shopping. So this is the slim card that we made, and we used... Who, somebody asked about the birch tree. The birch tree, yes, the die. It's right here. Um, right here. Tonight, that, the, that base project that we used was using that slim front panel die and the stitched, the rectangle stitch die. Now, the 
Into the Woods is the Birch Tree die set. Tom named this product. Yes, I did. Um, so it's got two it's got birch two. trees on it. It's got more than well, two. Well, I'm sorry. It's it, got five. It's got five. Count of five. Depends there's how you count. There's five there are, there's a set of three and a set, set of two. two. And there are two. You put them together, crafters, and you got a whole woods, a forest. <laughs> it's massive. Where's forest? So, it's incredible. Next Then you got week, all those deer running around there. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Tuesday. Do two cards, two regular A2 cards. Can't wait to see you. And that'll wrap up our um, All Is Calm series for the year. We will not be back until after the first of the year unless we decide to hop on and do a surprise, something we or other. You never can tell. Which probably, a surprise. which probably won't happen because I have so much to do. However, however, so. you never can tell around these parts. <laughs> uh, but since it is the last one for the year, we'll probably feed do your heart special. and your stomach. That's true, Amy. All right, so bless you May the Lord all. bless and keep you. You can do Thanks for coming anything and us. else. Kathy wants to know what's next. So, Kathy, um, my plan is I'm going to answer your question. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> do you even know what's next? Um, I, I do. <laughs> we, um, we have um, a new product coming well, on the way to us. Yes. For, um, which one? For new, which one? For new product launch. And so in January, we're going to focus on a new product that we are going to have, which is a um, snow globe. It's a secret just between the 60 of us. The snow globe, um, but it, of our closest it's friends. a snow globe die. It fits the oh, foam one. of the, um, the die cut foam that we have. So you can turn it into a shaker card and... We figured out how to turn it into a gumball machine. So it has a spinner device in it. So that's what we're going to be doing in January. I'm not sure exactly how all that's going to play out. I'm waiting on um, products to arrive, but that is where we're going. We'll be using new product. We're going to do some shaker card stuff. We're going to do some sequins. Sequins. And we'll probably throw in a little love. Love. Lots of love. A little love. Lots of love. Um, also, um, also, we're getting our just, show schedule just between you and I and the other 60 people yes. that are watching. Yes. How old will you be tomorrow? I'm going to be 39. 39 tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow is Tom's birthday. 39. Happy birthday, Happy birthday. Tom. So I didn't Tom. think you remembered. <laughs> so you can send Tom a happy birthday message. Um, anyway, what was I going to say? I don't know. I totally threw you off. You did. I? You did. Oh, well, but. Anyway. All right, bless you. Bless we you will see here. you next Tuesday night at 7.30. Yes. Bless you all. Bye Thank now. you so much. See ya.